we may get into the playoffs today who knows but we got the trade deadline we got a bunch of stuff to do let's get through it right now Players that are untouchable at the trade deadline, Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, captain. For this season, Kirby Doc, Slapkowski, New Hook for this season, Sean Farrell for this season, and for forwards, uh, Joshua Waugh for this season, Eicherman, Kidney, uh, Hanneman, and Mazar. So about 10 forwards that are untouchable for defense Matheson for I mean if the right package comes maybe but I'd like to hold on to him Reinbacher is untouchable Gooley Hudson for this season or Gooley for this season Baron for this season Hudson Reinbacher basically Travis Dermont and Valamaki are the only ones that can be traded or that are on the trade block but we could trade for a better defenseman technically and then uh, in that I mean, Montembeau for this season, I think we gotta keep him. Uh, Jacob Fowler obviously is untouchable. Montembeau, I mean, if we can upgrade Montembeau, Primo is on the block, so. Like, if I was to say positions we had to fix right here, we have to find a player to play here. Not in this specific, like, not right now, but we'll find somebody. Maybe we could trade. For a second line winger, that could be a spot we could upgrade. I mean, you could always upgrade the third line center, right? Because Farrell could obviously move to the wing or fourth line center. Then on defense, Travis Dermott could be upgraded and then Montembeau. So, I mean, really a goalie and a second line winger is our main targets. With that being said, let's get into the trade deadline as a conservative buyer. Because we could sell, we could buy. We're not going to mortgage our future for this one playoff run. And here is everybody that is available here in year number two. I like to look what we can get for our specific players. We can't get anything for our goalies. For our defensemen, Dermont. I mean, there's a lot of trades. Okay, like a fourth round pick. And then Valamaki as well. Uh, it's, it's like the same offers. Big one, Patrick Kane. I mean, we'd have to retain salary there. Brendan Gallagher, if we can get off that contract. Anderson, same thing, if we can get off that. Armia, same thing, if we can get off that. Okay, nobody wants any of our players. Duclair, teams will want him. We can get a second for Duclair, that's pretty good. And then Dayton Heinen, we could uh, get a third and a fourth. Okay, so I just went through the whole NHL. And there's only like one player where I'm like, yeah, that guy could 100% fit our team and like a player we'd want to trade for. And that is Andre Kuzmenko. I mean, he's on the older side, right? He's 29. But I mean, he fits in the top six, all power play lines. And I mean, he's an upgrade over Duclair. So let's see what they would want. Okay, they kind of are bugging, although Brendan Gallagher would work. So they want Brendan Gallagher, which is kind of crazy. I mean, I guess they're saying we'll take on this contract and we're, uh, we'll take a third and a second for a guy who's not going to re-sign with us. We're also trying to get Christian Fisher, who fits in all lines, all penalty gun lines. I feel like this is a fair trade because ch we changed the third for this year. Let's see if it goes through. It is rejected, but I'm willing to give up one of our better thirds and seeing if that goes through we'll give up our third and it is rejected here is the trade brendan gallagher and lucas condotta but a second round pick from pittsburgh who are a bad team so that is almost a first for kuzmenko who's not going to resign christian fisher not going to resign we will take this any day of the week calgary you got yourself a deal let's go Loki, I think that's it. I don't want to mortgage our entire future, but Kuzmenko, I mean, just like Kuzmenko and Fisher are two guys who can be on this team for a while. They can grow in overall still, and we'll see what Kuzmenko wants if we were to give him an extension, which he does want. Okay, so he wants like six mil. That's cool. Okay, so Kuzmenko is making 5.5. .5. If we go, I don't know if I want to go the six years, but I feel like this is a very tradable six year contract. You know what I mean? 
fucking attach picks or whatever. And this is like, you're going 5.5. So we're saving a bit of money on his current contract. And that is a done deal. So here are the new look lines. I mean, they're pretty similar. Kuzmenko just slides with Doc and Slavkovsky. I mean, Duclair just slides in Gallagher's spot. Christian Fisher's now on that fourth line. Look at this guy. Kills penalties. Does all that, right? Defense stays the same. Power play now. The second unit's looking sick. Duclair, new hook, Doc, Kuzmenko, Matheson. That is nice. Dude, this is crazy. We can get Christian Fisher at 1.75 for three years. If he doesn't grow, who cares? If he grows, that's sick. Kuzmenko resigns, Fisher resigns, so that is perfect. And I'll make the AHL lines and then we'll jump into this game. So Eicherman and Wall are playing together. Uh, and yeah, so I just ended up doing best lines, although our power play is looking kind of nice. Wall and Eicherman are two players who could be in that top six in the future. I mean, it's hard to tell, but we'll see how that goes. They're both two really good players. But now it is time for the debut of Andre Kuzmenko in a Montreal Canadiens jersey. We're up three to one, we're up five to, there's no point of jumping in, six, four win. Let's see how they did actually before we exit the game. Kuzmenko did nothing. Neither did Christian Fisher, but he was a plus one. And David Reinbacher has been injured. I mean, that's fine, we can just replace him for like five games or whatever it is. Uh, we just go about Mackie here and then Justin Barron here and we'll call it a day. We're on April 1st. We are second in the Atlantic Division, so we'll see how this one goes. Let's, let's check out some stats. I mean, Caulfield, Kane, and Suzuki are going crazy offensively. Kuzmenko, he has 16 and 12. That's what you love to see. That second line is cooking. I mean, Slavkovsky's minus 14, but they're cooking. Let's see how we do in these last couple games. Okay, so let's get into this one. We got the Panthers. We got the Rangers. We got the Panthers this week. Let's see how this one goes. A 3-1 loss to the Panthers. 4-3 OT. 5-4 shootout. That is not ideal whatsoever. The six-point lead. Boston Bruins. Let's see how we do. 3-1 win. And the Montreal Canadiens have clinched a playoff spot in the 2025 season. Not only did the Montreal Canadiens make the playoffs, they got 106 points and won the division with 50 wins. Adding Kane, Manko, Duke. I mean, we didn't make a ton of additions, but still second in the division in goals. Goals against, I mean, that's pretty good. That's crazy. I think they changed the scoring simulation engine, which is crazy. Power play, 25%. Top power play, top penalty kill. Combo, 28, 17, 5. 900 save percentage, Jacob Fowler, 13 and 2. Does he start in the playoffs? Who knows? On defense, Michael Matheson, 56 points only 11 of those were on the power play lane hudson 38 18 points on the power play Gooley 19 reinbacher 19 Dermot, baron valamaki although lane hudson was a minus five but we'll figure that one out later patrick kane 98 points let's go all forwards 98 points that is the most since like i don't even know since 2018-19, I mean, he is 36 years old, and he just had 98 points. Cole Caulfield, that has to be a career high, and it is 98 points for Cole Caulfield. What a season. Nick Suzuki, that is a career high. 96 points, 72 assists. These guys are a dynamic duo, and you had one of the greatest players on all of all time on their line. And look what happens. Kuzmenko. 26 and 20 doc i mean that's a career high for the third overall pick man he looked like a bust but 70 points that is that's not a bust anymore slapkovsky almost a point per game 63 and 70 that is a career high even with an injury 
New hook, that might be a career high, I guess it's not. Look at this depth, our entire third line had 41 points, they're a minus 11, but they're scoring the puck, so who cares. Anderson, I mean, that is criminal for five and a half, but we barely played him. And Christian Fisher with us, let's see how he did, seven points plus two, all you can ask for. Let's see here, at the save percentage and stuff, Jacob Markstrom looks like he'll win the Vesna. Connor Bedard, I don't know why they keep him in the CHL for the first year and why he's getting the train X factor, but uh, he had 93 points in, our, in his rookie year. I guess the game played Lane Hudson last year. Uh, I guess he's not a rookie. I mean, that's fine. Like, I don't think he would win the call there anyway. Jesus Christ. Eric Carlson, 101. Adam Fox, 93. Quinn Hughes, point per game. Victor Hedman, Dougie Hamilton. Where is Matheson? Matheson, I mean, it's not even in the top 20, I don't think. Jeez, the defensemen were going off this year. Oh, never mind, I'm blind. He is right here, so good job, Michael Matheson. And then for all skaters, there are the stats I want to see from the top guys. Elias Pettersson, 129. Austin Matthews, 126, 59 goals. McDavid, 112, still not high enough. Dry settle, 108. Hyman, 106, 46 goals. Trevor Zegers, we're not training for him now. 50 goal season. Ovechkin, 67 goals. The amount of 100 point scores is actually crazy. And then also the amount of 50 goal scores, although scoring was pretty similar to real life just like a like maybe i don't know five goals a team higher or not five like ten but it was actually very similar but look at this cole caulfield highest power play scorer cole eicherman 62 points in his rookie year here in professional hockey and let's see about joshua Waugh. i mean he should have done pretty well yeah 13 points he had a one goal and 12 assists. I mean, he's just passing to Eicherman, so fair enough. I was looking at the time of the video. We could, we could keep it going. We'll do the first round in this video. And we got the New York Rangers, our Temi Panarin, 96 overall. That is what we want Cole Caulfield to be, 93 points. Zabanajad, Trocek out on the wing with the quick draw is crazy. Drew and Lafreniere, Kreider. I mean, this team is this team is a good team. They won the President's Trophy two years or last year, technically. Adam Fox, 95 overall. That's what we want Lane Hudson to be, and then what we want Jacob Fowler to be. Igor Shesterkin. So I mean, this is a bad team to get for winning the division. This is a crazy wild card matchup, but we'll we'll see how this one goes. Um, yeah, so if we lose, the off season's next, which is fun. If we win, we keep going, which is also fun. So it's a win-win to do this series in this episode. I hope I'm not too quiet, but let's get it started. Game one here in the Bell Center. Let's see how this one goes. First period, it is two to one. Anthony Duclair scores for us, but Kreider and Zabanajad score for them. Three two. Hudson and Adam Fox. Let's see how this one goes. Power play for the Rangers. They do not capitalize. Can the Montreal Canadiens find an equalizer here? Looks like the teams are very even somehow. I mean, they are. We haven't got a shot in so long, and I think we are going to lose game number one. <laughs> Cole Caulfield. Seven seconds left in the game. We actually... We actually, we actually did it. Kuzmenko, trade deadline acquisition. It's one nothing for the Canadians. Bro, you already know how crazy the Bell Center would have been going if this happened. Let's see how game number two goes. It is 3-2 after one. Sean Farrell keeps us in the game, but Goudreau, Kreider, and Trocek, 7-5. What is going on? Jacob Fowler, why is he in the game? I mean, I guess Montembeau got pulled. But still, 7-5. Can we have another comeback power play? It's a long one. Kuzmenko on the power play. What even happened right there? 
but what a game, another power play for the Canadians and Will fucking Calibra. Yeah, this game is over, 8-6, to six. what a game. Game number 3, let's see how this one goes. In the Madison Square Garden, first period, it is 1-0 Justin Barron. Let's go. But the Rangers have another lead heading into the third. We should just real-time sim everything. And then maybe we'll get the simulation advantage. I have no clue, but we can't score on that power play. 35 shots. We have to get one pass. Igor Patrick Kane against his old team. Let's go. 2-2. Anthony Duclair. The free agent pickups go crazy. Michael Matheson into the empty net and it is 4-2 and a 2-1 series lead game number four we have reclaimed home ice advantage but let's see if we can beat the rangers twice in madison square garden nick suzuki the captain and alex newhook on the power play 5-2 kuzmenko slavkovsky patty kane will cooley who's having a monster series same with Chris Kreider. I feel like they both have three goals. But come on. We trust in Samuel Montembeau, Andre Kuzmenko, trade deadline acquisition. It is 6 2, 7 2, Patrick Kane. Oh my god, this game is over 7 2. Alright, we have three chances to knock the New York Rangers out of the playoffs. Game 5 in Bell Center. It is a sold out crowd here in Montreal. Let's see how the game goes. It is 1 1. Caden Gooley saves our asses, but Adam Fox on the power play. 4 to 1. Duclair twice. Uri Slavkovsky. It is 4 1. 5 1. The captain, Nick Suzuki, but Lafreniere, the Quebec native. Oh my god, Chris Kreider. It is 3-5. Oh my god, two goal lead heading down to the wire. Can we hold on here in front of the home fans? Three minutes left. Jonathan drew in. Oh my god. Oh my god, there's no fucking way. Fuck you, EA Sports. How did the Rangers score four goals just like that? I mean, we gotta jump in as coach, right? Field. Caulfield for Suzuki, the captain, Nick Suzuki on a breakaway, and he scores! The captain, Nick Suzuki, sends us to the second round of the playoffs. Oh my god, there is no way that just happened. We just took, I mean, we are the number one team in our division, right? We should be expected to go to the conference finals, but this is our first playoff run. And who else but Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki combining for the overtime winner. What a save by Montembeau there. What a save by Montembeau there. And then Caulfield gives it up to Suzuki. And Nick Suzuki sends us to round number two, which will be in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.